The royal family has been through their fair share of trials and tribulations in recent times, the tragic death of Prince Philip being the most recent. This has resulted in attention being turned to how Prince Philip was depicted in Netflix's The Crown, and representatives of the royal family have expressed the family's dissatisfaction with the hit drama. Regardless, the final two seasons of The Crown are going ahead without the royal blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt Rogers, and this is what we know so far about The Crown Season 5. So we've got a bit to talk about today, including cast, release date, setting, and rumours. But let's start with the controversy. So I'd like to think that everyone that watches a show based on a true story is aware the producers are bound to take advantage of some creative liberties. Don't let the truth get in the way of a good story, right? But as a lot of viewers are being introduced to the history of the royal family through the crown, those that are being represented in the show aren't really happy with how they're being portrayed. Culture Secretary of the UK government Oliver Dowden has put pressure on Netflix to introduce a disclaimer at the start of each episode, advising that it is a work of fiction. He said, quote, It's a beautifully produced work of fiction, so as with other TV productions, Netflix should be very clear at the beginning, it is just that, end quote. The streaming giant has responded to this request, saying, quote, We have always presented The Crown as a drama, and we have every confidence our members understand it's a work of fiction that's broadly based on historical events. As a result, we have no plans and see no need to add a disclaimer. End quote. Well, I guess that's the end of that. So Netflix is obviously not phased with how they are portraying the family and are full steam ahead for season five. But one of the main questions fans want to know is when will this season be based? As interesting as it would be to get a modern day season with Meghan Markle playing herself, that's obviously not what we're going to get. Some of you may know that season six was actually canceled by creator Peter Morgan, who later backpedaled this decision. It has been confirmed that the final two seasons will begin in the 1990s and end in the early 2000s. It is unclear at this stage how the time period will be spread over the two seasons. My guess is each season will probably cover their respective decades. This time period means that we will likely be seeing events such as many divorces, including Prince Andrew and Sarah Fergie Ferguson, Princess Anne and Mark Phillips, and of course Prince Charles and Princess Diana. Talking Prime Ministers, we will likely be seeing Prime Minister John Major and Tony Blair. But this period was also full of tragedy, including the deaths of the Queen Mother, Princess Margaret, and of course, Princess Diana. It's sounding like this is going to be quite a dark couple of seasons. So we know that every two seasons we have a complete casting overhaul to represent the family at different stages in their life. And I question this tactic at first, but I've loved the casting choices for all of the seasons, so much so that now I'm fully on board. But who will be stepping into the royal shoes this time around? Well, let's start with Her Majesty the Queen. Olivia Coleman is abdicating to make way for Imelda Staunton. She has had this to say about being cast in the role. Quote, I have loved watching The Crown from the very start. As an actor, it was a joy to see how both Claire Foy and Olivia Colman brought something special and unique to Peter Morgan's scripts. I am genuinely honoured to be joining such an exceptional creative team and to be taking The Crown to its conclusion. End quote. Of course we know Staunton from Harry Potter. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Don't you, Mr Potter? Vera Drake, and more recently, Downton Abbey. And what would cause this quarrel? Lord Grantham's mother believes her son should be my heir. Old Lady Grantham can be very hard to resist, as I am well aware. Exactly, ma'am. She talked about the challenges of playing the role in a recent interview with BBC Radio's Woman's Hour, saying, quote, I think my sort of extra challenge, as if I needed it, is that I'm now doing the Queen that we're a little more familiar with. With Claire Foy, it was almost history, and now I'm playing with one that people could say, she doesn't do that, she's not like that, end quote. I do see her point, but I have all faith in her incredible acting skills, and I'm sure she will do the role justice. She's just being modest. Now onto who will be playing her husband, none other than Jonathan Price. You may know him from Game of Thrones or The Two Popes. I personally enjoyed him as the antagonist in James Bond's Tomorrow Never Dies, which I guess now is a bit of a dated reference, but Price had this to say about being in The Crown. 
Quote, I am delighted to be working with Netflix again. The positive experience I had making The Two Popes has given me the confidence to tackle the daunting prospect of portraying Prince Philip. To be doing so with Peter Morgan in the company of Imelda and Leslie will be a joy. End quote. All eyes and extra pressure will of course be on Price after the recent passing of Prince Philip, but he also has the skills to pull it off in my opinion. We have two more cast members that have been confirmed, one of them being Leslie Manville in the role of Princess Margaret. Manville said, quote, I could not be happier to be playing Princess Margaret. The baton is being passed on from two formidable actresses, and I really don't want to let the side down. Furthermore, to be playing siblings with my dear friend Imelda Staunton will be nothing short of a complete joy." End quote. And interesting she should say that, this isn't the first time that Manville and Staunton have played sisters. In Disney's 2014's Maleficent, Manville and Staunton played Notgrass and Flittle, the fairy godmothers of Aurora. I'm not too familiar with Manville's other work, so let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations. Now another actor with lots of pressure on them is Elizabeth Debicki. Emma Corrin only had one season to play the role of Diana and did an incredible job doing so. It is a shame we didn't really get more of Corrin, but Debicki definitely looks the part and I did enjoy her role in Tenet. Debicki has said, quote, Princess Diana's spirit, her words, and her actions live in the hearts of so many. It is my true privilege and honour to be joining this masterful series, which has had me absolutely hooked from episode one, end quote, and well put. These four are the only cast members officially confirmed at the time of filming this video, but when will we see these actors' portrayal of the royals? Well, previously we have seen a one year break after season one and three, but two years between two and three, so it's likely we won't see season five until late 2022. Filming is currently on hiatus, but planned to resume in July 2021. The website deadline have confirmed that the filming break has been part of the Crown's production schedule and is not related to the pandemic, although sources acknowledge that the hiatus has been helpfully timed. With the show recently winning a plethora of awards, including multiple Golden Globes, the show is going from strength to strength, and I for one can't wait to see how this epic drama series comes to its conclusion, which will be bittersweet the closer we get to its end. But what are you most looking forward to in the final seasons? I'd love to hear what you think, so let me know. I'll be down there in the comments. Be sure to join me as I keep you up to date on all things The Crown. Subscribe and ring that bell to not miss a single thing. If you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. And if you had a good time hanging out, then spank that like button. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.